Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tuesday tip where in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install brakes on your BMX bike. So since I started making Tip Tuesday videos a couple years ago I've had a ton of requests on how to install brakes on the bike. So here you go, we're doing it today. We're gonna to show you how to install brakes on this bike and we're going to start with making sure that all of our hardware and braking needs to get a setup going are covered. First and foremost, you're going to need a frame that can accept brakes, so make sure you've got the mounts, whether or not they're welded on or removable. If they're removable, put them in there, and that's what we're going to do to start. So I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to tell the difference here, but this frame brake kit came with two different brake mounts. Not really sure why, but we're gonna put this shorter one on the side of the bottom brake arm. It also came with this little piece that goes against the frame, so we're gonna put that on first. And then we're just gonna screw it into the frame. And if you're doing this, you don't want these to come out or come loose, especially with this design. So make sure there's Loctite on there. Make sure there's thread locker of some sort because if you don't, you're going to be bummed out one day when this comes loose and it inevitably will. And when you do this, make sure you get it as tight as possible. Like I said, you don't want this one to come loose because there's no way to tighten this from the exterior of the bike. Now we're gonna put the other one on, which isn't as much of a worry because you can use a crescent wrench or a wrench on this one. And since we're back here already, let's go ahead and throw on our brake arms. The bottom brake arm is very obvious. You can tell that they have to go a certain way. So you can see here, the logo goes on the top and that is how these work. So the bottom one obviously has to go on first, otherwise you wouldn't be able to get it underneath. So we're gonna put on the bottom one first. And then the next thing that you need to pay attention to here is the spring direction. So there are two different springs that come with your brakes and they spring in two different directions. So when we put this on here, we wanna make sure that we have the correct spring so that things work properly and we don't have to take everything apart. And real quick, I wanna show you guys something on the brake arm. There is a hole in the brake arm for the spring end to go into. There's also one on the cap as well for the cap to go into. Sometimes there's two or even more than that, just in case something gets worn. And we wanna make sure that we line these things up whenever we put them on. So I'm gonna screw in the cap just a little bit so that we can show you guys how to tell whether or not the springs are going the correct direction. Whenever we have this on here, we can clearly see that the spring winds in a specific direction. So we can see that going this way is going opposite of that direction and going this way tightens the spring. And that's what we want. We want the spring to tighten. So let's turn the cap and you can see that it pushes the brake pad away from the rim. And when we push on it, it's springing the properly the way a brake should. So that means that this one is correct and we can go ahead and tighten it the rest of the way down. And then we can move on to the other side and just go ahead and put it on because we know that we're correct now. And just a quick tip that I haven't done yet because I'm going to take this back apart for a final assembly. Something you should do here is grease the mounts on your brakes. Make sure that you grease just the post, not the inside and not where the post goes into the frame. It'll make it a lot easier to slide your brake arms on and they will pivot a whole lot smoother that way. Like I said, I'm going to do that after the fact. And real quick, just to confirm and show you guys again, let's tighten this spring in the direction that the coil goes. Tightening the spring here. You can't really see it that well, but it is, I promise. And it's pushing the pad away from the rim. You can see I'm pushing on the pad this direction and it's springing properly. That means that we have the correct orientation and we can move forward with our brake install. All right, so we're up at the front of the bike now to install the brake lever. This one is fairly straightforward. You just pick the side that you want to put your brake lever on and put it on right next to your grip where you want it to be. Most brake levers these days have hinging technology so you don't have to worry about whether or not the grip is on. And all you do is put it over the bar, put your Allen bolt back in, and tighten it down. 
This one's fairly straightforward and this is definitely on the bend of the bar. All you old school guys, mid school, old school guys will remember that from the days of 2006, whenever people had really skinny bars, I'm just gonna slide this grip over a little bit and push up our brake lever because that just did not feel right. We'll move the grip later. Okay, so now we're just tightening it all the way down. All right, so that seems to be all right. You don't have to tighten this down all the way right now. It's not a huge deal because it will be adjusted later. And now we can move on to our brake cable, which is down here on the floor. Normally you're going to be starting with a brand new cable that isn't already cut to length, but this cable has been used on a previous bike, so we don't have to cut it, but I will go through what you would do if you did have to cut it. So next we're gonna be putting on the cable and all you have to do to put on your cable, if you've never done this before, there is an end on your cable. They don't all look like this. This is just Kink's design, but that end goes into a slot on your brake lever. Then from there, you angle it into the slot and continue it. You make sure that your barrel adjuster pieces are lined up as so. Just kidding. <laughs> now as so. Then you off center them a little bit so it can't come back out. One thing to consider while we're up here is the adjustment of your barrel adjuster. If you're setting up a new cable, you wanna leave the tiniest amount of slack in here if you weren't planning on it. Just leave a tiny bit so that in case you tighten everything as tight as it could possibly go, you have some adjustment to loosen out and still have some brakes rather than having to pull some of your cable through. So we've got that handled and now we can put the cable through to the rest of the bike. So, so real quick, before we continue to the back of the bike again, I'm going to put this Velcro strap on here to keep our cable under control. Now we don't have to worry about a floppy cable going everywhere and we can work in the back of the bike easily. Since we're demonstrating a straight cable setup today, we will be talking about straddle cable setups, which I have the fly straddle cable setup here. Doesn't really matter as far as installing the brakes goes. It's all about the same. So let's continue talking about this. What we're gonna wanna do is thread our barrel adjuster into our cable guide here. And here, once again, we want to leave a little bit of adjustment just in case. That might not even be enough if we get everything extremely tight. Then from here, we're going to thread our cable through it. You could also put the barrel adjuster onto the cable first and then do it that way. Doesn't really matter. But it's at this point, if you had a brand new cable, that you would figure out the length of your cable housing. So that is totally up to personal preference. I feel like the off of home improvement right now. And if you're old enough to know what that is, good for you. But it's all totally personal preference. You just take a look at how much slack is on your straight cable. And if it feels like too much, then you're gonna cut some of this off. And if it feels like not enough, then you're either gonna have to buy a new brake cable or deal with it. So from here, this has already been cut. And if you are going to cut this housing, make sure you take the inner out first, because if you don't, you're gonna cut off both at the same spot and you don't want that. So we've got everything figured out here. Next up is the straddle cable setup. What I have here is the fly straddle cable setup, which has just two cable pieces with two ends on each one, and then a hanger that they go in. The hanger quite literally just goes onto the end of your cable. All right, there we go. I would keep anything that you have to tighten on your straddle cable hanger facing downward so that you can get to it. And from here, we kind of are just figuring out where we need to be. So we're gonna slide one in, put it into our hanger. Then we're gonna slide the other one in. And we're gonna put that one into our hanger. And you'll notice we haven't adjusted our brake spring tension yet. That is something that we will do last in this whole process, just because it is so much easier to get everything set up 
if you do it before you actually set up your brake spring tension. So here, what you're going to do with this straddle cable setup is you're going to pull all of the slack out of your cable with the inner. So you wanna make sure that your barrel adjusters are seated properly, both on the back and on the front up here. Everything looks good as far as that goes. Everything is seated properly. We wanna make sure that we have our adjustment in both barrel adjusters or all of your barrel adjusters if you're doing a gyro cable setup. And we're gonna pull that through, get it as good as we possibly can. Another thing that we can do while we have our brake spring tension loose is adjust our brake pads because they don't have any spring tension on them. That makes it a lot easier to do what you need to do and keep them in place while you're tightening it. These are already good to go, but you can do it. So if your brake pads are in the right place, you can get all of this set up. And the last thing that you'll do here is just tighten down the screw on the straddle cable setup. You may have a different looking setup, but it's going to be very similar to this just because it's probably going to be something that you tighten down in order to keep in place on your main cable, whether or not it's a cable that goes from one brake arm to the other. And once you get all of this set up and tight, if you pulled the proper amount of slack out of your inner cable, your brake pads should be against your rim what you can do is loosen your barrel adjusters up, take out that slack, and you should have some more play here in your brake pads. Obviously, there's not any spring tension yet, and that is the next step. And that's where we're gonna leave this one because I've actually already got two other videos about brake spring tension and how to adjust it. This video was solely meant to show you how to get everything on here because I've got a ton of videos about adjusting your brakes, dialing them in, and just making them the best brakes that they can be. So check out this video right here to learn how to adjust your brake spring tension and finish off your brake setup. And when you're done with that, check out the playlist right here for more tips and tricks for how to adjust your brakes and just make them the best BMX brakes that they can be. I want to thank you guys for being here and watching. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something useful. If you did and you're new, hit the subscribe button down below and I will see you tomorrow for another video. Goodbye.